we're going to start off with um, a, a scripture, but you may not know this, but I do have a time machine. Yeah. It's just something that uh, I keep in my back pocket. And uh, we're going to step into our time machine and uh, we're going to move from this place and we're going to go back in time. Who wants to go back in time? You know, um, the, somebody asked me the story. He said, if you had a time machine and you could only go one way, to the future or to the past, which one would you choose? Why don't you tell the person next to you, as you stand up, which one you would choose? Yes. Which one? Okay, hands up. How many would go to the future? Oh, two hands there. Wow. Okay. And hands up. Who would go to the past? Oh, I think it's probably 50-50. Come on, the ones who are... St we're going to be... This is kind of role play. For those who are sat down thinking, what the hang is going on? We're going to be role playing. So... We're going to um, a time in history where the God's people were stood on the banks of the Jordan River. So we're going to be God's people standing on the banks of the Jordan River. Is that okay? Yeah. For those who are sat down, is that okay? Yeah. That's where we stood. They didn't have chairs back in the day. There were no chairs. They were stood because something was happening. Great. Thank you. And so um, we're going to... I, the Jordan River was there, so we need water. I hope you went to the bathroom before uh, service. Can you hear it? Great. So there's the Jordan River. We are stood on the banks of the Jordan River, and this is a moment for God's people because they have just spent 40 years in the wilderness. And prior to that, 400 years being slaves to the Egyptians. So this is a moment. God has given a promise to their forefathers, Abraham, and had, it, has, it has gone through the generations. It's been spoken, word of mouth, told to children who have grown up and told their children, who have grown up and told their children, who have grown up and told their children. All the time they were slaves in, in Egypt and treated you know, like dirt. They were telling the story of how God was going to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, a promised land. And they have gone 40 years in the wilderness. God pulled them out of slavery. He rescued them out of slavery. 40 years in the wilderness camping out learning about who God is, learning about who they are, learning about he, how mighty He is and how they are now sons and daughters of God. But now there's a moment where it's time. It's time for them to step into this land flowing with milk and honey, this, the promise that's been given to God, uh, given to the, them as from God. And so in Joshua 3, We've got this moment, verse one, it says, early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from, and thank you, and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark, do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. Consecrate yourselves. This is important. Something had to happen before they crossed over. And this is it, consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priest, take up the ark of the covenant and pass ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all of Israel so that they may know that I am with you as I was with 
Moses, your predecessor. And then it goes, tell the, the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the water. Uh, oh, right, go and stand in the river. That's what put me off. Go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that He will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Jebusites. See, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Lord, we commit this moment to you, Lord God. We say, come and have your way. We declare that every heart be open, every ear be open. Let us have ears to hear what you are saying to us as a church and to each person individually. Lord, we just thank you that there is a shift about to happen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sit down. You can take your seats, Israelites. Ah, I like stepping into the Bible. I think, I think it's fun. I think it gives us a perspective that these people were not just fictional characters, but actual real people that were going into an incredible season, one that was pre, um, unprecedented, one that, that they could not really understand because they have never, the Bible says, been that way before. Now we feel as a church, audacious church, that we are gonna be stepping into a season of growth. Now we've been growing steadily over the last 12 years um, and we thank God for that. It's been, a, um, it's been a, an amazing adventure, this, this faith journey that God has called us to as, as audacious church. But we feel that in this next season, this is, this is another level of growth. This is a supernatural growth. And so what we are believing for is that you as an individual, your family, your business, your life is actually about to go to another level of growth. We're believing that God is gonna bring many people into the life of the church um, that is unprecedented. But it's not because that God works outside of His people like some miracle, like He may have done in the wilderness, where He just, you know, brought water and He just, you know, brought a flock of birds so that the Israelites could have meat. No, this is another, this is, this is another way of working, God working through His people. So when this level of growth that we are anticipating is because God is growing you, because He's growing your internal world. And we've called our series on spiritual disciplines. Have we mentioned that? No, we're starting a new series today about spiritual disciplines. And we've called it Wake Up because it's taken from Ephesians chapter five, Verse 14, where it says, this is why it says, wake up sleeper and rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Now this suggests to me that you can be in a moment you could be in a shift, like Heather was saying. She said, I feel a shift coming and what I know I need to do is get ready. We can be in a moment like that, but we can miss it. That's why the Bible says, wake up, O sleeper. Wake up. Understand the moment that we're in. Understand what is happening now because it just might require something of you. It may just need you to view your life differently, view your days differently, view your, your moments differently if you understood the moment that you were in. The Israelites are having a moment. It's a major moment. 
We are having a moment as a church, but we need to wake up. We need to bring, we need to become aware. I don't know about you, but um, sometimes I can miss it. Sometimes I don't realise I'm in a moment until the moment's over. Anybody? I mean, hindsight is 2020. Sometimes you can look back on your life and go, wow, that was a moment. I had a moment that, was, that shifted everything. But you don't know it when you're in it because you're in it. You know it when it's done and you can actually see the fruit of that moment. You go, wow, that was significant time for me. Every single one of us can look back on our lives and look at the significant moments. But sometimes we don't know it. So um, when Jaden, um, our son, was a little bit uh, younger, he used to play football. And he used to play football on Saturday when it was freezing. Anybody feel my pain where I'm taking my son to football and, uh, you know, because that's what good parents do, you know, fan the flames of passion, you know, and talent, you know, and, you know, one day he's going to look after us all, <laughs> you know, playing professionally for Man City, of course. And uh, so, you know, we're like, come on, you know, Jaden, let's go. And, but I need to be prepared because being an Australian, I, I find it very hard, the wet weather and cold, wet weather and then windy, cold, wet weather. I mean, that's just hard, right? So I go prepared. I take my fold-out chair so I can sit because I don't know how the other parents do it, but they stand for the whole time with their hands in their pockets, just looking and shouting stuff out, you know, and being the coach. But I like to be comfortable, so I sit with my chair and then I bring a blanket because I'm freezing. And I've got my jacket on that makes me look like the Michelin man. And then I sit down in my chair with my blanket, but then I've got my flask of hot beverage and um, I've got my flask, so I'm ready. That's going to keep me warm. And then I've got my phone because I need to capture the awesomeness that's about to take place. And, you know, that's important. And then I've got my umbrella because it's, it's, it's that fine drizzle. It's just, it's not raining. It's just a drizzling, which everybody seems to think is perfect conditions to be doing sport outside. So I've got my umbrella, I've got my, my beanie, I've got everything. And then it's just like, I, can't, I don't know what happens, but, but I'll be focused all through the game. I'll be we're looking at going this way, and then we're looking at it going that way. And I am that mother that thinks it's my prime duty, not just to encourage my son, but to embarrass him in front of his peers. And so I scream, Jaden, go, Jaden, that was awesome. Jaden, get your boot in, or, you know, get the ball, get the ball back. I'm that mother. So I'm focused all through the game because I feel like it's my chanting and my cheering on that is actually going to make the difference, yeah. <laughs> and um, I might just look down and think, I might need a drink just to keep warm. Or I might be thinking, Glenn's not here, I need to capture this, I need to get a photo. And while I'm faffing around with my drink and with my phone, everybody goes, go! And I'm like, oh, come on. Like I had been focused all through the game and now when I'm not focused, when I'm just distracted by all this stuff that's going on, all good stuff, mind you, then I miss the moment. And then to add injury upon injury, whatever, and somebody will go and go, your boy just did an amazing pass. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's great. And inside I'm thinking, I cannot believe it. He's going to come to me and he's going to say, did you get it? Did you get it? Did you see it? And I'll be like, well, you just, you smashed that game. Smashed it. Can't tell him I, did, I missed it because I'm faffing around with something else. 
wouldn't it be great if somebody could just tell me when the goals were going to be scored? <laughs> that would help me. Because then I can be not worried about missing the moment. If you tell me when the goals are going to be scored, then I'll be ready. I'll be ready with my phone. I'll be ready with my cheers. I'll be ready to take the moment in. Well, the Holy Spirit is a little bit like that because He actually does give us a sense of when something's about to change, when something is about to shift. And we are having a moment right now, church. Just like the Israelites were having a moment where they were moving from the wilderness to the promised land. There is something happening in this place that we are shifting to another level of growth. But we want you to be aware of it. We want everybody to be aware of it. We we need to wake up and smell the coffee and understand that something is about to take place. This is what the Bible says when God's people are assembled. I can imagine that they were wondering what they needed to do, what was going to happen. But the Bible says here, Joshua gives orders to all of the people that you are to look where the Ark of the Covenant is. And when you see the Ark of the Covenant moving, then you are to go after it because you've never been this way before and it's going to tell you which direction to go in. The Ark of the Covenant for the people of God was the presence of God. It was where God was. And so in our context, it is the presence of God in our lives. When we give our lives to Jesus, He comes and He makes His home in our hearts. We become born again. We become a new creature in Christ. We become a son or a daughter of God. Something has taken place. But each and every one of us need to pursue God. We need to follow Him. We need to know where He is and what He's doing because God is always on the move. God is here. And right now He has a plan and He has a purpose. I completely loved what Josh brought because God was here to let us know that there are some things in our lives that are dead, but they're not, they appear dead, but they're not dead. They're just asleep. This is the Spirit of God leading us, telling us which way to go. But more often than not, we can miss it because we're we're distracted. Good stuff in our lives. It could be your routine. It could be uh, social media. It could be relationships. I want to tell you what a distraction is. It's anything that takes you away from the presence of God. Okay, let me put it another way. Anything that distracts you from pursuing your relationship with God, for looking, for looking. That's what what the Bible said to the Israelites, the God's people. He said, look, 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 where is God? What is He saying? Then Joshua says to the people, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is what we're doing in church. We're coming, we're assembling to listen to the words of the Lord your God so that we know which way to go. But sometimes life can be, it dulls our senses. Distraction dulls our senses. Doesn't mean that we're bad people. Not at all. Doesn't mean that we're, you know, just uh, substandard Christians. Not at all. Doesn't mean that we don't have faith. It doesn't mean anything. We are doing good. We're flowing. We're doing our lives. But there comes a moment where the Bible says we need to consecrate ourselves. There's a shift that's about to happen and there's something that is required of us and that is consecration. Now, it's a weird word. I do appreciate that because we don't use it very often. Can you imagine if we used consecration in our everyday lives? You can rock up to work and say to the boss, I'm really sorry, I'm late. I was consecrating myself. You know, that would be odd. You know, when the children come down and say, you know, what's for dinner? 
You can say, you can go upstairs and consecrate yourself first. What does it even mean? Well, the Bible says that consecration is to set yourself apart, to sanctify yourself, to set yourself apart for God. It's really interesting because in my understanding, I would think that's what God does for me. He sets me apart. He does all of that. He sets, that's what he did when he came and made his um, home in my heart, when I put my trust in Jesus, when I, when I said yes, that you are my saviour and you are my God, that he came and did a work in me. And that's his job. But when you were in a moment like this, we are asked to actually do it ourselves. And what does that even mean? It means bringing your life into an extra special sense of pursuing God, an extra special single focus, an extra special kind of deliberate movement towards what God is doing. It's a awareness. It's increasing your awareness of what God is saying and what God is doing. That's what consecration is. And God doesn't do it, we do it. It's dealing with our routine and saying, routine, you need to change. You need to adjust to this new season that I'm about to step into because I am consecrating myself. I'm going to set myself apart for God. So season or maybe it's uh, relationships that you know pull away at your heart. They pull your heart away from the things of God. You've got to say, well, you know what? I need to make a decision here because I'm setting myself apart in a fresh way. Maybe the way you do entertainment. Maybe it's putting aside some of the things that you do for entertainment because you're, you're making time. You're setting time aside to go for a single focus, a single kind of hearted uh, pursuit of God. This is what the Israelites were doing. Look and see where the Ark of the Covenant is. That, that's when you'll know which way to go. But consecration is about leaving stuff behind. It could be routines, it could be people, it could be mindsets. You see, to bring your life into single focus, and maybe you've got to adjust some of the, the things that you've been telling yourself or the things that you believe. Maybe some of us have got negative mindsets. Those kinds of the kinds of things that we need to leave behind when we bring our lives into single focus, into a deliberate kind of pursuit of what God is doing in our lives. I don't know what it is for you, but I, I trust that the Spirit of God is going to help you. It says here in John 15, verse 8, 1 to 8, Jesus speaking to his disciples. He puts it beautifully. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Here, the Lord is taking an, an illustration of pruning. We are now in nature's pruning. Autumn, where autumn, where nature is now getting rid of all the stuff it doesn't need. The, the leaves are turning and they will fall off the branches. And it will look like 
the tree has lost its glory or the, the tree has lost its, its, its flourish. But the fact is the tree is working hard. He's, the tree in our context is consecrating itself because it's dedicating itself all of its life, all of its resource, all of it, all of that it has, it has, it's not wasting it on stuff that bears no fruit. It is now going to the roots and it is lengthening and it is strengthening and it is, it is building strength into its roots so we can house the new growth that is about to come. This is the season that we're in. What is it that's in your life that's superfluous to need? It's time to cull back. It's, it's time to get back to basics. It's time to get rid of the stuff that does not serve you and will not serve your pursuit of the Lord. It's time to bring our whole lives into single focus. An athlete does the same. When an athlete decides and it puts its purpose that it's going to compete, it puts their body into training. And when it puts the body into training, it says no to many things that it would have said yes to before. It might say no to pizza. It might say no to nights out with their friends. It might say no to the, the mindset that says, no matter how much I train, I'm never going to win. It's got to say no to that. It's got to say no to anything that does not serve the purpose of competing and getting their body into the best shape that it possibly can be and to get their mind into the best competitive mindset that it can be. All those things are not bad, but they're just wasteful right now. And so this is what we're doing. We're going to be aware that God is about to do something in our midst and we're going to consecrate ourselves by getting rid of anything that does not serve us that dulls our senses, that makes us confused or distracted from what God is actually saying. Wake up, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Taking the opportunities, every opportunity, because the days are evil. God's about to do something in our midst. It's going to take culling our lives. I know, it's exciting, right? Woohoo! Cull. I get you. I'm with you. But it's for purpose. We can't be unprepared. We've got to get ready. We've got to get lean. We've got to get sharp. We've got to sensitize our spirit to, so that we can see and hear what God is doing. The other part of um, consecration is consent. God will not force His way into our lives. He will not do anything in our hearts and our lives without our consent. So this is a fresh sense of, Lord, I'm getting rid of distraction, but I'm also giving you a renewed sense of consent. Have your way in my life, even in the stuff that I don't want you to touch, even in the stuff that I'm hanging on to for dear life, even those grudges, even that unforgiveness, even that negative mindset. Yes, Lord, I'm telling you, I give you full permission to come and work in my life. We've got to give God consent. Have your way. Somebody say, have your way. It's not for the faint-hearted. And also... Consecration is going to mean change. Change, change, change. Change. Nobody likes change, really. I mean, some of us, we like, yeah, I, like, I don't like to, you know, hang around. I like to have variety in my life. But really, when we're talking about spiritual, pursuing God's presence, coming into a season of consecration, the status quo of our lives does not give up without a fight. Let me give you a heads up. In this season, as we as a church are going to be consecrating ourselves, get ready, get ready, get ready. You're going to meet resistance. And it's going to be physical resistance. It's going to be resistance like, why do I have to do this? 
Surely God loves me anyway. Surely, I, you know, this is all about the grace of God. It's not about what I do. It's about what the Lord has done. And I amen all of that. You know, Jesus, take the wheel. Got ya. But this is a season where when we're moving into another level, we come into a, a season of consecration, of focus, of getting rid of distraction, of bringing our spirit to the forefront and knowing what God is doing. We get lean in the spirit. We get our spiritual disciplines and we start to flex them. And like we were at this level with our spiritual disciplines, we kind of bring it to another level so that we can build more strength, so that we can take more weight, so that we can be faster, so that we can be, you know, stronger and better in what we're doing. But nothing in your world is going to welcome it. Nothing. Except Spirit of God. He's like, woohoo, let's do it. But your relationships, stuff may kick off in your world. And you'll be like, what on earth is going on? Some stuff may kick off where you're just like, what's going on? There's no rhyme or reason in our, in our world globally and nationally, stuff's kicking off. There's hysteria everywhere. People are hysterical. People are fearful. People are, you know, wondering how this is going to all pan out. But I want to encourage you that that is just resistance. The Lord is always in control. The Lord said to His disciples, He said, in this world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Be aware of the season that you're in. If you find resistance, if stuff starts kicking off, maybe in your health, maybe in your family, maybe you're just thinking, ah, oh, this is so hard. So hard to pray. It's so hard to worship. It's so hard to get into my Bible. That's resistance. But the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. That you have the weapons, you have the ability, that you have the power to overcome all resistance in your world. You do, church. So we've got culling, we've got consent, we've got change. But I want to encourage you. The most important thing in all of this is your focus. It's where your eyes are. That's the most important thing in a season of consecration. Can I ask you, what, who do you say deserves your gaze? What deserves your gaze? What is the thing that you look at more than anything else? that you entertain in your mind more than anything else? Is it deserving of you? Because in a moment of consecration, what we are saying to the Lord and to the powers that be, the Lord deserves my gaze. I bring my heart, my mind, my life into single focus in this moment. And I I harness my will. I harness my passion. I harness my love. I harness my determination in this moment to make Him the focus of my gaze, to make Him my priority, to say to, the, to my world, to my soul, to the spiritual realm, He alone satisfies. I need Him before I need anything else. Who deserves your gaze? I'm challenged, church. I'm challenged at the things that I say deserve my gaze. And they give me nothing. They serve me in no way. Don't help me hear Him. 
They don't help me see Him. They don't help my faith. They don't help my hope. They don't help my purpose. But this is the moment where we identify the things that don't serve us. To give priority to the Lord and His presence in our lives. And the way we do it is through the truth. The Word of God. I encourage you, this is a new season to get into your Word. Get into the Word of God. Get into the Bible. Because in the Bible, it tells us who He is. In the Bible, it tells us who we are. In the Bible, we understand our position and our place in this world. We understand that we're here to say, Your kingdom come and Your will be done. We understand that we're here to be His hands and His feet and His heart and His voice. And when everybody's flapping around hysterical, we're going to say, hey, shh, it's going to be all right. Because the Lord is the victory. We're, We're pursuing the truth in a new, prolonged and deliberate way. And this is where our spiritual disciplines come come in. We've got meditation. Meditation saved my life. Meditation, not on, you know, anything, but on the Lord and on His truth saved my life. You might not know this, but in 2010, I stopped sleeping in the... Experts call it chronic sleeplessness. I thought I was losing my mind. And I did not know how to get out of it. And one of the keys, if not the main key, was to drag my soul into the presence of God and say, I will stay here and I will look at the truth and I will look at the Lord until I believe it. I will not give in to this. I will not say this is my life. It's the truth that sets you free. It's getting a hold of the truth, not just having the truth in our homes. It's it's getting into the Word and saying, Lord, speak this over me. Lord, I stand on this Word. I will not look to the right and I will not look to the left. I will stand on this Word. It's living, it's breathing, it feeds us. It gives strength to us, it nurtures our bones. It cleans our mind. Prayer, not any prayer, prayer that gets hold of the Word. Worship, not just any worship, but worship that gets hold of the Word. Fasting, fasting, we'll be doing fasting in this season because It says to our body, pipe down. Says to our soul, pipe down. I need my spirit to come to the forefront here because I need to hear the Lord. I need to pursue Him. I need to bring my flesh, the Bible calls it flesh, all of the stuff that pulls me away and says it doesn't matter how much time I spend in the Word or how much time I spend in prayer. It doesn't matter. It's, you know, just just enjoy yourself. I need to speak to those urges and say, submit, because I need to consecrate myself right now. I need to bring Him into my awareness. I need to maximise my awareness of His truth. So, This is the spiritual disciplines. These are the internal ones. It's not for the faint-hearted. We're not tiptoeing through the tulips. We're getting a hold of the Word. We're getting a hold of truth. We're putting aside stuff that doesn't serve us and we're getting a hold of it. Because just like the Lord said to the Israelites, He says, consecrate yourselves because tomorrow I'm gonna do amazing things in your midst, among you. I hope you hear my heart right now because I'm not telling you to do more. Don't hear that. This is not religion. 
I'm telling you to get a hold of yourself. Get a hold of the Word. Get a hold of where you are going, what you are looking at, what your focus is, where your awareness is. Can you see Him? Can you hear Him? Because God is about to do something in our midst and we've got to bring our internal world into focus and let it be strengthened by His Spirit. Oh, I need a tissue. Somebody. I just want to encourage you. We're about to respond to God. I want to just talk to the guys streaming online. Sorry, I felt like someone was tugging on me. <laughs> do, 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 do. Anyway, um, speak that God's moving in your midst even now, He's stirring your heart. This is what's happening. Something happens when you hear the voice of a loved one. Something leaps in your heart. And this is what this message is all about. It's about you hearing the voice of the Lord and your heart leaping and saying, Lord, I want to spend time with you. Lord, I know you're, you, need, you need me to get my focus right. You need me to get leaner. You need me to, to get into shape. You need me to see you and, and maximise and get my awareness on the truth. This is what it is. The, the, the voice of the Lord is saying, hey, hey, you, you got no idea. I'm about to do something. I'm about to do something. I'm about to, to step, you're about to step into the miraculous. You're about to step into stuff that you don't understand. You don't understand how it happened. You don't understand where it came from. You don't understand how these prayers were answered. You see, you thought it was dead, but it was just asleep. You don't understand how this is going to work. You see, the river is in flood. You don't understand how you're going to cross it. But what you're going to do is you're going to take me into the waters. You're going to take me into the river and something amazing is going to happen. The river is going to run dry and you are going to walk over into the promised land on dry ground. On dry ground. Insane. Insane. Crazy miracles. Father, we thank You for what You're about to do. And we can hear Your voice. We can hear that You are calling us to consecrate ourselves.